Might say, that's my song right there. That's, that's my song. I understand that song. My goodness. I see you. I see you, Sister Coleman. I see you moving that head. <laughs> I see you. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to go to celebrate our musicians. They're ready to go. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> Thank God for the gifts in the house. Let's go to Psalms 23, familiar scripture reading there. I'm going to pick it up, verse 1 through 6, in its totality. I'm going to read it from the, new, from the King James. I think I have the King James Version here. Psalms 23, when you have it, say, I have it. Uh, if you probably know it by heart. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup is runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And all the people said amen. amen. I want to tie a message together. It's entitled, Stay Anchored in Jesus. Stay Anchored in Jesus. I believe I ministered this a couple of times or another, on another occasion. Woke up this morning with it hitting my spirit again, and it's some points of interest I want to point out in this um, that I believe the Lord gave me, and I'm going to just restate them again, and hopefully you can grab onto them. Um, I want to give you a disclaimer. Don't watch too much of that continuous negative news, because it'll drown you. It'll take you all the way under. I mean, know what's be, be informed of what's going on and be educated to what's happening around the world. But before you know it, they'll, they'll pull you into all of that and it'll take you under. If you live long enough to understand world systems and world movements, war brings money. And people that create wars create war for more money. You can't give our teachers a raise, but you're gonna drop 20 billion over in another country. I'm not political, I'm just making fact, you know. Homeless are all around our cities, all around our country, homeless all up and down our streets. But you can print billions just like that. It's war, war brings that. So don't get pulled into that, stay anchored in Jesus. Dr. House said it, I also said it. When you see all these things, look up because your redemption or your drawing of the Lord is coming near. The positive thoughts here is very powerful, and David is writing from another scripture in Psalm 61, 1 and 2. And his thoughts provoke us to give attention to this, as well as this Psalms 23. The positive thoughts here are so powerful that it, it outlasts the negative, the positive thoughts outlast the negative thoughts that the enemy will bring. It's a mindset and a movement that we are, we are in right now. Believing in yourself in, and knowing within yourself that in spite of what's going on, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Put that in the atmosphere. Say greater, greater. is he, the Holy Spirit, that's in me than he that is in the world. It's First John 4 and 4. There's a greater one on the inside of you. You have greatness in you. And that greatness is the power of the Holy Spirit. Those are positive thoughts. Anchor your thoughts in Jesus. Stay anchored in Jesus. We have a personal fellowship with the Father and through the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit dwells in us as believers, that the world, our Satan's influence, does not overcome the believer, does not, should not overtake the believer, because you have a greater one on the inside. Watch Psalm 61. We're going to move to a few scriptures, and I'll bring you back home. Psalm 61 in verse 1 and 2, particularly verse 2, I think, he says, I am, I've cried, O Lord, and to him I cry, O Lord, attend unto, my, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. David is writing, this psalm's in Psalm 61 about a, a point in his life where 
he's, he's made up in his mind at Psalm 61, verse 8. He says, I'm going to keep on praising the Lord, praising God, despite what I'm going through. His thought mindset is right. He understands that he is in a difficult time. Life can bring you those from moment to moment. But he determined to continue to praise the Lord, Psalm 61 and verse 8. If I don't keep praising the Lord, then the overwhelming thoughts of the cloud of darkness will set in on me. He elevated his heart from a daily distractions to lasting confidence in God. From daily distractions to lasting confidence in God. So he stays anchored in the Lord. We ought to stay anchored in Jesus. In, in all time, we need, especially at these times like these, we need an anchor, we need a savior, we need a stable place. We need to launch ourselves in this season bore deeper into Jesus. Uh, it's, it's very critical uh, because when you have to make decisions, you need to go anchored in Jesus. You have to settle yourself in his directions, not it's what you want to do. Uh, in times like these, or in times of blessings and prosperity, we still need to be anchored in Jesus. We need to know that the outcome of everything that I'm going through is going to be the Lord is my shepherd and he is leading me, and I shall not want. There'll be no lack because he's, he's my shepherd. Keep tracking, Psalms 34, verse 10. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Now, you can shout right there if you want to. If not, I'll keep going. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. You'll, you'll catch up on the next one. <clears throat> Only way you're gonna lack something is that you do not understand the scriptures or you're operating not in faith but in unbelief you will lack if you do not believe but if you believe you will be, have no lack matthew 17 20 21 spares it out and he says because of their unbelief the disciples could not heal the boy that was demon possessed could not cast the devil out because of their unbelief hebrews 11 and 6 he says, if you come to God, you must believe that he is and a reward of those who continuously seek him. James 1, 5 and 6, he says, because you're double-minded, don't think you're going to receive anything from the Lord. Now I believe him, now I don't. Now I don't trust him, now I do trust him. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let him think that he will receive nothing from the Lord. But if I'm anchored in Jesus, there would be no lack in my life. I must trust God and believe if he said it, he's able to perform it. Put that in the atmosphere. Say, Lord, if you said it, you will perform it. And he is a great performer. So I must anchor. I must anchor. Anchor is something that gives stability. It gives stability. It also gives confidence in time of uncertainty. And I understand more now walking with the Lord, how the enemy is so subtle. He can talk to you in ways that no one knows, but that internal dialogue is, is reactioned upon the outside uh, with our attitude of disbelief. So even now that I'm ministering this word, and I know that it goes out and will not return void, someone is internalizing what you're going through right now, but the word is cracking through those waves <laughs> and getting down to your spirit, because I'm not talking to your flesh. I'm talking to your spirit man. For greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And when the word hits that spirit man, you may be Methodist, but your hand gonna go up. Whatever your religious faith is, you're gonna respond to that word. Let the church say amen. See, the word goes out, and when the word goes out, you say, so let it be. So it is, so it is. So it is that place that you find a stability and confidence in time of uncertainties. And we are in a wave of uncertainties today. We know that by faith, that if, we, if, we, if our steps are ordered by the Lord, the Lord is our master and he has a master plan and those plans are constantly unfolding and they are working. His plans, he says in Jeremiah about, he says, I know the future and I know you're put, expected in, but those plans, plans are unfolding. Uh, even in the foundation of the world that we're in right now, he's revealing those plans in stages, 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 
stage. Just, if, 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 if God be for us, who can be against us? But it has to be something coming against you for you to say that it cannot be against me. Is the evidence here that if I'm walking through a valley of shadow of death, I know that God's hand is directing me and guiding me, but I'm going through stages, stages, stages. Uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had some construction going on outside. Some of you might have seen it when you, you came in. Um, and now it's finished and all of the debris has moved away. Um, um, how many remember that phase, that phase? Some of you didn't, wasn't here, you didn't see it. But uh, that construction was a perfect picture for you to see that it looks like a mess out here. But you got to see the finished stage. Because at the end of the stage, all the debris is going away. So don't let the devil tell you it's going to always stay jacked up. It's going to be the end of this. And when God completes a thing, it's going to be perfectly right. But it has to go through stages, stages, stages. It's much stages, are much like construction. But there is a finished phase. There's a finished phase as he orders our steps and reveal the stages. Stages of transformation, it changes our life. And stages goes in phases. Stages goes in phases. Stages go in a process. Stages go in development. And his keys are unknown. What stage are you in? Where are you at right now? On Victory Boulevard or in the Valley of Shadow of Death? Or just coming into your next test? But you all are going to be going through something all your life. Coming into a test, coming out of a test, and going to the next test for your testimony. What phase are you in? You see, God is often, often gives us the first step. Step out and trust me. But then he goes silent on you. And then once he goes silent on you, that's the waiting stage. And that's the stage where you start tripping. I'm sorry, well, I start tripping. <laughs> like, God, okay, well, you, you told me this is my, this is my roof year. I mean, it won't glean in Boasville, but I lost my car. I've got to go live with folk that don't like me. Things, I lost my job. I got demoted, not promoted. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Phases and stages, stages of construction. You start tripping, Clinton, because things are moving out your life. If things are moving in your life. It's the Beverly Hill Billies. It's everything what you thought it would be. And the traumatic thing takes place where it goes into battles in your mind. Battles in your mind. God, are you sure? I thought I heard you. The battles of the unknown and the whys of God. Why are you doing this to me now? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? I have done nothing. Last time I was jacked up, didn't anything happen. Now I've been walking the straight and narrow and everything going cuckoo for Cocoa Pots. God, I don't understand how you work, but I know I'm going through something that I can't figure you out. Jeremiah told you, 29, 11, he says, I know your ways and your reasonings. I have your plans, and I'm going to bring you to an expected end. You just keep walking and know that the stage is not over. When it's over, I promise you, you're going to be dancing like you never danced before. Because better is the ending of a thing than the beginning. Move, Clinton, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Paul says we can cast down these imaginations and these stages. These imaginations exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. We said we can bring them down and, and capture them, their rebellious thoughts, and teach them to obey Christ. Reach up and just pull down to yourselves. You're going to obey Jesus. I mean, you ain't got nobody else to obey. I, can, I, I can't pull you down, but you got to bring your own inner dialogue down. You see, it, we hold responsibilities to manage our minds. It's our responsibility to manage our minds, especially when we're tripping. When we're out there just going on and on, God don't like me, God trying to kill me, God don't want me, God trying to take me out. God don't have to give you a test to take you out, honey. <laughs> <laughs> ask them folk down and well you can't ask them but read your Bible about Sodom and Gomorrah God ain't got to do a whole bunch of stuff to take you out just one sweep and he can take you out you're tripping because you don't understand the whys of God we have to fill our minds church with the word of God staying anchored in God means to fill my mind with the word of God sometimes it's, it's simple it's simply as paying attention to how, how the enemy is so subtle to move up on you and begin to slip your mind into thoughts that are away from God 
He's so subtle to do it. Before you know it, he's talking to you and telling you, you're not going to make it. It's not going to turn out good. Uh, this looks like the end. Uh, it's not, there's no way out of this. But he, the enemy knows you got an, a, 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 another connection inside of you. That when you tap into that connection, everything changes for your better. But you got to tap into the word of God. Romans 12, coming back to Psalms 12, uh, 23 in just a second. Romans 12 and 2, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, changed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, conforming or fashioning to the world or to this age. I cannot get caught up in conforming to the age. They call it, I think now, zeitgeist. It's the general culture or climate of the era. It's the spirit of the times. Zeitgeist today is described as the spirit of the times, the spirit of the age. He says, which profoundly affects the fashions of the time. If I get caught up in the world, I'll start doing what the world do to try to catch up with the times. If I'm not careful, I'm on Xanax, UX, DX, DX. I'm on everything trying to find out what's going to happen because I need to know myself from this stuff that's going around me. What little pill can take me a long way? A little pill can mess you up. I cannot get fashioned to the things of this world or the age. I cannot, but I must be fashioned to the things of Christ. So I must be transformed spiritually, supernaturally by the spirit of my mind to know what is the good, perfect will of God. It's it's almost like I'm standing here and I'm going through a storm. But if I go spiritual, I step over here and I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. But if I stay here, I'll keep going through this craziness. But I can step over into the spirit man and be transformed by the renewing of my mind. We set in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if I sit here quiet and depressed and under, oh me, the enemy is going to bury you in a moment. But Anytime you want to step out and step in to the spirit realm, you can do that because the spirit is inside of me. It's living inside of me. Look at the neighbor and say, don't let me go spiritual. I turn this church out. I'll go praising and thanking God because he should have left me here in my depression. But the enemy can only push a believer down so low before you pop back up with victory. Fashion, not with the world but by the renewing of my mind. God has favored you. His favor is on you. You ain't got to eat the king's meat. Daniel 1 and 8 says we ain't eating that stuff. We purpose in our heart, we gonna obey God. He said, but if you don't think it's gonna get better for us, check us out in 10 days. See, when you tell the enemy, I'm not eating what you're trying to feed me, I'm gonna eat this word and let that word go down in my spirit. And in 10 days, I'm gonna come out stronger and better. Check your diet, girl. Check your diet, man. You can't be filled with all that word and be that quiet because Jeremiah said it's like, shut up in my bones I can't contain what God is doing in my life stay anchored anchored in Jesus anchored in Jesus my my thoughts are anchored my thoughts are spiritual my my thoughts are overturning the plans of the enemy counseling the assignment of the enemy's attack it's counseling demonic assignments It's counseling satanic assignment is counseling what the enemy meant for what evil God turns it to good because of what's inside of you Simon I know what your name is Peter but right now I see Simon coming up out of you because Simon got a sword and a whole lot of other words <laughs> but Simon Satan wants to have you that he may sift you as wheat but I prayed for you that your faith would not fail you're not relaxing in this church this morning because you brought yourself out <laughs> it's because God's mercy didn't allow you to be concerned so even though the enemy wants to change your identity, you still came out a believer, a witness, an overcomer, a faith walker, a powerful individual because greater is inside of you. Sometimes God will carry you through seasons of ordered steps. And then sometimes God prays you through seasons where you don't know what step you're taking. You're being tried on every hand worried and restless 
not figuring out how this all going to turn out. Seasons of clear steps. Then it's seasons of, I'm trying to hear you closer. It's like the natural anchor we need to stay with God. It's intended to keep me in a good place, stabilize me. The anchor here speaks about in Jesus that my step, steps are ordered in Psalms 23 and 4. I, I walk through the valley of shadow of death. And back to Psalms 23. My steps are ordered and my anchor is in him. Thou art with me. It is in the midst of this movement that I know that I'm not, God's not shocked about what I'm going through. You might be flipping out, tripping out, and bawling out, but God's not shocked about what you're going through. I'm the one that told you to go down this road because I'm leading you down this road. And I promise you, if I'm making it out, you're going to make it out. I'm preparing the way for you to get out of whatever you're going through. I'm making a way for you. Psalms 23, verse 5. He prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thank you, Bishop Sapp. I'm not going there. He prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is here that we see God has set up a blessing. Put that in the atmosphere. God has set up another blessing. But I don't like this table. But it's at this table that my blessing is going to be there. I'm going to show you how I'm going to bless you in the presence of your enemies. I need them to think for sure you're never going to get out of this one. But God says sit down and get prepared because I'm going to bless your socks off. You're going to be amazed about what I can do if you just sit down. Why do you prepare God? Why, do you, why, do you, why don't you prevent this from happening? He says I want this to happen. If they mess with you public, uh, privately, I'm going to bless you publicly. I'm going to make sure that I use you as anybody want to be God's witness this morning. I want to bless you publicly because I know you can handle what I'm about to do. You, can, you can't be blessed unless you have enemies, Bishop Noel Jones. You have to have enemies to be blessed. Everybody's not going to like you, but the more enemies you have, the more blessings you have. And I just want to stop by to say this. You can have enemies with blessings or without blessings. I'll take the enemies with blessings than without the blessing. Goodness and mercy, Psalms 23, shall follow me all the days of my life. Go there, Psalms 23, verse 6. I got the clock. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life life I, I, I'm backed up against the wall and I, I don't know how this is gonna look I uh, said but, but I, I'm not alone even though I'm backed up against the wall goodness is provisions and wisdom and insight mercy is God's protection and divine instructions wisdom is this goodness is provisions and wisdom and instructions peace and going on but mercy is God's protection and divine intervention he steps in and gives you insight. It's the Issachar spirit to know the times and the seasons. So when you're anchored to Jesus, even though you get off track, he has a GPS that can get you right back on track. He knows how to do this and he does it by mercy. His mercy is his protection. God's mercy is his hidden love. It comes down to us and it comes on levels and waves and brings us back up. Mercy sees you down, but mercy brings you back up. Help me out, Habakkuk, and I'm out to close. Habakkuk 3 and verse 2 particularly. He said, Lord, I've heard your speech, and I was afraid. Habakkuk 3 and verse 2 is where I'm going. I've heard your speech, and I'm afraid. He said, oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the year. He said, in the midst of the years, make it known. In your wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk. Want three and two. In your wrath, I know you've got to correct us, but in your correction, remember mercy. Don't take it all out on us at one time. You remember when your dad and mom do that, used to come to that season of whoopings. They don't do that today. But remember, mom and dad used to come and just to get the belt. And like the psychological trauma that you had to go in and get a belt. He said, like, what do you mean get the belt? I don't know where your belts are at. He just go get me one. If you don't get a belt, I'll get one. I'll go get the belt. I'll get the belt. I'll get the belt. <laughs> if you can't even have a belt, get a switch. But I'm going to show you how much I, I, I run a discipline and I love you because everyone the Lord loves Hebrews he said he chastens and scourges every son that comes into the world so God you know what to put on me because I don't know what to put on me. it's gonna make me act right but he knows how to whoop that back yes he does yes he does yes he does he knows how to get you all the way tighten up right up and straighten up because he knows that I got to put a little bit more on you than I put on her because she can I can look at her she gonna get right you I gotta beat you all the way down you you just hard-headed you you just want a real beat down and then go tell somebody about it Anybody know what I'm talking about? Listen, 
but stay anchored with Jesus and when he does the whooping he does the whooping with mercy Rebecca understood that God was about to do something to Israel but he also understood he's about to do something with the enemies that were fighting against Israel so Lord in your wrath remember mercy move on Clinton this mercy of God is new grace and this new grace in Lamentations 3 and 2021 20, 21 and 23, this new grace is seen. He said, it's because of the mind. He said, therefore, I have hold. Uh, Lamentations 3, 21, 23, is because, he said, I, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It's through the Lord's mercy that I have not been consumed. It's his mercy and love. See, staying anchored to Jesus is the best place you can be. It's mercy under his love and his grace. He said, I will not fail you if you stay connected to me. There are new mercies every morning you wake up. And great is God's faithfulness every morning you wake up. God's love, according to 1 Corinthians 13, it never fails. It never runs out. It's new every morning. The love I needed yesterday is not going to work for the love I need today. The mercy I needed yesterday is not going to work for the mercy I need today. The grace I needed yesterday is not working for the grace I need today. But I need new grace today because I got new demons to fight and new things to go through and new valleys of shadow of death. But whatever I'm going through, I have a history and experience that God's mercy is renewed every morning. I can hear God in the spirit saying, though you've been knocked down, you will not stay down. Though you've been tripped up, you will not stay tripped up because you're anchored to me. You're hooked on to something that cannot lose and cannot go down. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Do not worry and don't trip out. Don't allow yourself to sit there and feel like it's all over. You're coming out with goodness and mercy, not just for next week, but all the days days of your life every day of your life you have goodness and mercy bringing you back up you fell down but I'm picking you back up you've been crying but your crying is gonna be over you need help and help is on the way because I'm a very present help in the time of trouble I remember the Lord when he came by and told me what are you going through now I said seem like everything is stacked against me he said I like it when your odds are not in your favor because I make up the difference when you seem like you can't do it yourself then it's time for me to step on in and show you the God that you serve him the God of the valley and the God of the mountaintop the God of the broke days and the God of the plentiful days the God of the sick days and the God of the healed days I'm the God of every circumstance no matter where I am I'm God I'm God in the morning I'm God in the noonday I'm God when the Sun is setting down I'm God when you don't feel me but I'm still God God when you you don't see me but I'm still God I'm a God that keeps making a way for you I'm the God of all circumstance and I gotta ask you before I go to my seat and I'm feeling kind of Pentecostal is there anything too hard for God and you got to say back to me no there's nothing too hard for God look at my life in a hard place but God said I'll reach down to the lowest place and pull you back up I'll pull the drugs out your system I'll take the taste out out your mouth I'll put you in a right relationship and tell you you're my child you're my baby you're my favorite and no weapon formed against you shall prosper every tongue that rise against you is gonna be condemned I got you to ask somebody won't God do it he's a midnight rider he's a turnaround God look what he does I got a table that's yours sit down and eat I got a table that's yours I'm your shepherd you shall not want your enemy is all around you but I've anointed yes shut up your enemies all around you but I anointed your head with oil if nothing else work the anointing will destroy you back the devil up in the corner let the devil behave I'm anointed for drama anointed for breakthrough don't want it but I've been through enough to understand oh I know how this gonna turn out joy is coming in the morning joy is coming in the morning joy is coming in the morning I know the end of this story God will get all the glory he he will be magnified he will be glorified stay anchored in Jesus yes sir hallelujah hook one person by the elbow and say hang on in there
took somebody else by the elbow and said, hang on in there. Come on, send a praise up in this house. carries three people tell them stop tripping stop tripping stop tripping stop tripping you stop tripping slip your hands up with me father we bless you for this word I want to stay anchored in Jesus that means I must get in your word I must remember if you said it you're going to perform it I can't be wish washy and double minded I must settle myself and understand that if I'm in a valley you're the God of the valley and you're also the God of the mountain top every experience every phase and when my soul is overwhelmed. Let me remember Psalms 61. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Set me on a stable place. Jesus, we got too much history for me to be tripping. We, we didn't been through too much for me to give up. I trust you. Now bottle up every tear. Understand all my fears. So I'll look up for my redemption is so near. In the name of Jesus, thank you for trusting me with this test. Because I don't want my neighbor's test. You designed this one for me. And me and you, Jesus, we're going to get through this. In Jesus' name, amen.